Hello everyone, hello professional colleague all over the globe. Uh, this is Nos Goodness again saying hello from Republic of Ireland. How are you doing today? I hope you enjoyed my previous video. You know, I'm just here to say thank you all for your support. Thank you for those that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thanks to those that shared my video. Very grateful for that. And uh, today again, I'm here with another video as I promise you people that will be coming up with different videos to help you people to make it easily accessible as far as RCSI exam is concerned and as far as coming to the Republic of Ireland to practice as, as a nurse from any part of the country you are coming from. I'm going to be making it easier by releasing some videos, minding my boundaries to videos that will guide you on how to prepare for the exam, what to expect, what does this mean for, what does this stand for? Because some people do send me emails and uh, messages asking me the meaning of this, meaning of decision later, meaning of this. The, the. So my video is to um, educate people on what those terminologies are and how easy it is for you to come over here without making much mistakes okay so my last video i treated them um, that was i treated the differences between adaptation and the rcsi exam so in this very video i'm going to be talking about the 14 stations in rcsi exam for those who will choose to come over and write exam I told you guys that in most decision later, depending on your discipline, after the assessments, they will issue you what is called decision later, and they might ask you to choose either adaptation or RSSI. So this very video is going to be addressing the stations, the 14 stations you are likely to meet in your RSSI exam, and you are expected to pass the 14 stations in two sittings. But guys, I always advise people to strive, strive, try as much as possible to pass the exam at first sitting because when you are going in for second sitting at that point it's going to be your last chance and some psychological um you know disturbances and you wouldn't want to go in and feel even detention anxiety and the rest of them so the best bet remains that you should try and pass at first attempt okay for those of you who doesn't understand what RCSI mean, RCSI is a body that organizes the RCSI exam, the aptitude test. When you get your decision later, they will ask you to do go for exam or adaptation. And if you are going for the exam, the exam is organized by a body called RCSI, RCSI which stands for Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Faculty of Nursing. And you'll be writing 14 stations. And today I'm going to be treating the 14 stations. And also some, some people do send me messages that the whole thing is sounding so strange. You know, uh, they really don't know how to assess some of this information that I'm sharing. Good. Now, for those that have been asking me how do they prepare, like they don't even know where to, what to read, where to get the material to prepare prepare for their exam, type www.rcsi.com. When you click on it, then it will open the page for you. You see different things like you see the overview, you see the theory part of it, the practical part of it, and you see preparation, you see fees. Fees is if you want to pay for the exam, okay? That's where you click the fee. But for today, I'm going to be talking about the preparation and also the stations you'll be meeting. So for preparation, when you enter the site, click on preparation. When you click on the preparation uh, button, it will take you to the minimum background reading. You will see minimum background reading. In the minimum background reading, then when you click it, you see the different topics that you expected to read. I mean, to prepare with, okay? So make sure you go through all that, even if you don't finish it. Or I advise people to go through it. There are not that many. Get your exercise book. Read the topic one after the other according to your preference and make sure you go through all. And then practicalize because they're because coming here for practical. The OSCE part of it is the practical aspect of it, not just the theory that you just go and use the MCQ and answer. No, they want you to practicalize. They want to be very sure that you know what you are saying, that you are competent enough to be issued the pain. Now, today, as I said, 
we'll, we'll be discussing um, the 14 stations of RCSI exam. Before then, I want to say congratulations to all our members that recently entered I Ireland, uh, Republic of Ireland. I got some messages. I also got some messages of those that passed their RCSI exam, and I'm excited that it's really working. Uh, I'm also saying congratulations that go, those to those that got their, their visa. In any different phase, stage you are in this process, just keep striving, okay, until you get your pain. And I'm, sh I'm assuring you that if you make the necessary preparation, meet the right people, use the right um, material for the preparation, you'll definitely pass your exam. Now, today, as I said, we are discussing 14 stations in RCSI. I'm going to be listing these um, 14 stations, and I'll be saying one or two things, but I won't be teaching it properly like dissecting one station uh, or the other i'm going to be doing that in a different video so that i don't make it so lengthy and so bulky and i wouldn't want something that will not interest you guys anymore so and um before i start listing the 14 stations let me remind you all i said that in my previous video and i'm saying it again i do not work with nmbi i don't work with rcsi I am an Irish nurse practicing in Republic of Ireland and I'm here simply to help people, to guide people because we need more, more, more people to come here and join the profession. It's nice to work as an Irish nurse, like it's lovely to work here. They're good. Irish people are good, okay? And for you guys to come over here, because I noticed that most nurses, international nurses, they, they strive more for UK and um, um, Canada, Australia, and some other countries. But uh, So some of these uh, informations that we are making available online is simply to help to guide those that wish to come here to practice as a nurse. So in the stations of RCSI exam, we have 14 stations. So pick up your pen and then be writing it down. As you finish listening to this uh, topic, I will want you to go to their site, make your notes according to these stations, okay? It will help you a lot. Okay, so now, one of the stations, and let me also let you know that it's not as I'm going to list it that you meet it that day. They can decide to start you with any station. They can start you with practical station. They can start you with stocking station. It's up to them, totally up to the assessors, okay? So pick up your pen. The first station we'll be talking about today is the admission station. One of the stations you'll be writing, you'll be, you'll be uh, doing in your OPSCI is admission station. And admission station is just about, they want to know if you can assess a patient that is admitted in the hospital for the risks of some medical issues like uh, if patients stand the risks of developing pressure so okay so they might give you a water low form to assess the patient or if the patient stand the risks of developing malnutrition they might give you a form for assessment of malnutrition that's uh, the most too okay that's the most must malnutrition universal screening tool and they might also give you the one that is called the FRAT. So FRAT is just to uh, check if patients uh, is at risk of fall, okay? That is the admission station. And then another station, so that is station number one. Remember, it might not come in this sequence. Station number two we are going to be talking about is the, is the acute station. Acute station is just, they, they, want to, they will be assessing you on how you can respond in acute setting. They might bring a scenario where a patient is having seizure or where a patient is having angina pectoris or a patient is having a neurovascular pain. Some of these are acute, acute station. They want to see how you can respond to acute situation if you happen to be in the clinical setting, okay? So that is the acute setting. We are done with the admission. And second is acute setting where I said, Patients, uh, maybe uh, they might ask you questions on a scenario on seizure, CPR, um, angina pectoris, as the case may be, or neurovascular assessment. That is it. And then the third one we'll be talking about is the medication station. Medication station is simply they want to know how you can administer medication. As a nurse, one of your primary responsibility is to administer prescribed medication to your patient. Now, it's not about knowing what the doctor wrote, it being able to interpret what the medical prescription is. 
is not about that. They want to be sure that you know your rights of medication and that you adhere to those rights of medication at every point in time that you're administering medication to your patients. Because they are coming into this um, Republic of Ireland to care for patients and the life of patients to some extent is in your hand. So we don't want any unnecessary mistakes. We don't even want any mistake as far as medication is concerned. And that's why they don't joke with medication errors here, okay? Now, in the medication, they will, be give, they will likely give you one or two, three medications and ask you to administer it to a patient. In doing that, please make sure that you, you take note of all the rights of medication. Is it the right patient you are giving the medication? Is it the right dose, the right time, the right frequency, right documentation, right response, all the rights of medication? You make sure that you, you put that into consideration before you serve the medication. I don't want to start... I don't want to start explaining this. I want to do that in separate videos, okay, so that it will guide all of us on how to go about it in each station. So that is the medication station. Please make sure you take note of the medication um, validity. Is it expired? Because yes, expected to check the validity of the medication before you give. You check the dues and the rest of them. So that is the, the station number three. Station number four, we'll be talking about the wound dressing station. You'll be giving, um, you'll be giving a, a scenario to dress a wound. Okay, so of course you are expected to use all those. Uh, all, you are expected to use the aseptic non-touch, uh, technique to make sure you don't infect the wound, wound, and then to dress the wound the way it should be done in clinical setting. That is for the wound dressing, and then for the IV administration uh, station is another station. They want to see if you can administer um maybe fluid through intravenous route, okay? So that's one of the stations you also be given and they want to be sure that you don't contaminate sites, okay? And you make sure they want to also know if you can assess the site for phlebitis and the rest of them, how to spike, how to, how to prime, and then how to regulate the infusion, okay? So that's one of the stations you'll be, uh, you're likely to face when, during your OSCE exam in Ireland here. Yeah. The next uh, station is the vital sign station, okay? And you're expected to check the vital signs of the patient. This should be one of the commonest or one of the simplest uh, stations that people will want to undergo because in almost all part of the world, most nurses are very familiar with checking the vital signs of the patient. But it's not all about checking the BP, the respiration. There are other things they are looking out for in that station and we'll be discussing that in subsequent videos. So you'll be given uh an you'll be given the I news form that's the um the I news form that's Irish National Early Warning System. Okay, it is a form. It's for those of you that are into UK processing, it's about it's it's like it's more of A to E assessment, okay, where you check the patient A way, breathing, circulation, disability, the exposure. Okay, that is the I knew. So you 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 carry out the assessment on the patient, you score. You, you you total the score and then you escalate it according to the escalation protocol that is for the INUS. So the another station you'll be expecting is the infection control station. In, infection control station is just some of those um procedures, some of those things we do in clinical settings to minimize the spread of infection, like the hand hygiene. You might be asked to demonstrate the hand hygiene according to WHO. They might also ask you different um clinical beans and uh, use in yeah clinical beans the colors and what they in what they stand for and also some questions on how to um how to manage spills these are some of the questions you expect in um infection control station okay and then another station that is station number eight is chest infection station in chest infection station uh is 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 mostly about uh they want to assess if you have the skill to nebulize patient to uh for oxygenation and nebulization okay so the assessor might be acting like he or she is having a 
uh, chest infection and then you, you you expected to check the doctor's prescription if patient is prescribed oxygenation or nebulization and how do you go about it do you follow the doctor's prescription are you giving the exact um liter of oxygen or exact meals of um maybe normal saline or water depending on what the doctor has prescribed that a uh, patient should be nebulized and what how do you follow up the patient that is the chest in infection station and now the ninth uh the ninth station is the student teaching in this scenario or uh, yeah they will give you um a topic to educate maybe a second year student or year student as the case may be and they will ask you to educate the patient the sorry excuse me uh to educate the student on on a particular a uh, procedure or a particular topic a uh, medical condition like they might ask you to educate a, a student a second year student on stroke and mri and you're expected to do this within um uh, within eight minutes normally most of their stations are 10 minutes okay but the truth is that as soon as you go into the station your time starts then okay at that point they will be asking you trying to confirm your name your time is part of it i stand to be corrected anyway so but uh it's always good that when you are preparing for this this exam train yourself with seven minutes maximum of eight minutes do not exceed eight minutes for any station because this exam in this RCSI exam for any stations that they ring bell on you, anything you say, anything you do after the bell is rung, they will not be considered in that exam. So whatever skills you've learned while preparing, make sure you do that before they ring the bell. Because if they ring the bell against you and then you do those things, the examiner will not consider that. And I told you in the other of my video that examiners are there to help you pass, okay? They're not uh, that hard as people might think but at the same time they want to be sure that you are competent enough to hold the pain okay so they're very careful uh in the people uh, in in their marking criteria okay they, you, you just have to you just have to hit what they want for them to um give you a pass okay so that is it for chest infection station i said you are going to be uh, a nebulizing patient oxygenation and nebulization and some other skills that is expected of you to do them and then the ninth station is the student teaching station okay yeah i've said that student teaching station where well, they might ask you to talk about ischemic stroke, stroke, MRI, or they might ask you to talk about H. pylori, that's for the for ulcer, and then gastroscopy or, or colonoscopy. These are some of the questions that might come up in student station. And then, so it's up to you to go to their site and read each of these topic. You just have to read it according to how it's written in their site, okay? I advise you people to make sure you use the recommended material from nmbi from rcsi okay for you to prepare for this exam and then student patient teaching is another station in patient teaching uh you might be asked to teach a patient maybe a patient that has copd that uh, is about to be discharged they want to know how you can educate the patient on how to manage his or her condition at home what and what should the patients avoid uh, what and what should the patient be doing what association should they join and you also explain briefly on what the medical condition copd is so it's up to you to go to their site and read it up so that you have the you have the information at hand okay when educating the patient also the patient could be a diabetic patient and they want you to educate the patient on how to cope with his or her medical condition at home and the next station we're going to be talking about is the uh, 11 station that's isba for the uk nurses they will say esba that uk starts their own from s but island starts from i isba spelled as is an acronym I S B A R, okay, is five letter words. I S B A R is B. For I, I stands for identity. B stands for situation. Sorry, S stands for situation. B stands for background. A stands for assessment, and R stands for recommendation. Is a station on its own, okay, and it's still the same time frame. So you need to teach. Uh, you need to 
train yourself in a way that you can meet up with time. You'll be given some documents, some of the patient documents, like maybe fluid balance charts, the eye news, or depending on what they're asking, the GCS form, depending on what your scenario is all about. And then they will give you some uh, information about the patient, like the age of the patient, the medical conditions and all that. So you have to use the forms provided for you and then the, patient, the scenario itself and then communicate. The ISBA is just a channel, a, a method of communication in clinical setting. How will you be able to communicate to the doctor or to your fellow colleague concerning a particular patient following that format? So in that, you're expected to start with the I, which is identity. Hello, I am Nose Goodness, uh, calling from Tosuso World, okay? I'm calling in respect to you call the name of the patient and then like that, like that's how it goes. I'm going to treat it in a different video. So that is for I. For B, is just, uh, for S, is just the situation. What is wrong with the patient? Why are you calling the doctor? Okay, that is the situation. And then the background is about the patient. How old is the patient? Has the patient has some medical condition, past medical uh, histories and all that? That is for background. And then assessment is what is your assessment and then what is your recommendation for the R. So it's going to come in a different video. So that is one of the station you'll be expecting. That is the station number 11 and then station number 12 is about sepsis it's called sepsis station so they have a form called sepsis form you need to download it they made everything available in that site like everything you can think of even the i news you need to go there do download all those um forms go through them familiarize yourself with the forms okay so that it won't be strange for you the day of your exam practice with that form time yourself practice with your pillow practice with your colleague practice with anything you can think of just to make sure that you pass that exam okay and then the station number 13 we are going to be talking about is the therapeutic communication station. See, one of these qualities or uh, one of the skills you should have as a nurse is your communication skill. How can you effectively communicate to the patient in a therapeutic manner? Okay, like uh, the therapeutic communication could be maybe uh, how will you deliver uh, a bad news to a patient or a patient relative? They could ask you maybe a patient is a uh, condition is deteriorating and they want you to call communicate the nest of kin or they might ask you to um, um communicate the patient's uh, re lab uh, result to him or her so uh, they want to see this skill how can you do that without uh a, how can you how can you deliver that message to the patient relative in, in a therapeutic manner so that is the 13th station and lastly the 14th station is the uh, urinary tract infection station so this infection is about um, urinalysis, the catheter bundle, and the rest of them. They want to see if you can, because one of the things you will be you will be doing in your in clinical setting is common. Um, I wouldn't say it's common, but I would say one of the things you do in clinical setting is your ability to test the patient's urine, like for infection, or how to do deep stick urine, how to how to read the results and catheter bundle, how to take care of catheter and the rest of them. So guys, these are the 14 stations uh, you might likely see in your RCSI exam. Remember I said I don't work with RCSI. I'm sharing my experience based on I'm sharing this video based on my experience and the experience of some of my colleagues and this is simply to guide you people to encourage you to avail the necessary information and to guide you on where to get some of the information that you might be searching for so that you can adequately prepare for this exam and come over here and write and have it done. Just to recap the stations, admission station, acute station, wound dressing station, medication station, IV priming station, vital signs station, infection control station, chest infection station, uh, student teaching, patient teaching, um, the ISBA, ISBA communication station, and then sepsis station, therapeutic communication station, and urinary tract um, station, okay? So guys, these are the 14 stations you will likely see at the moment when you come over to do your RCSI exam. That's for the OSCE part of it, the practical part of it. Guys, don't get scared. Don't be discouraged. It's not that, it's not that hard as you might think. All you need to do is to study with the right material, study with the right people, okay? And then get the right information. Equip yourself by doing, by 
practicalizing it. The truth is that nobody can do it for you. There's no other fast way of becoming an Irish nurse than to do what you're expected to do, which is to come over here and do the adaptation or do the um OSCE and you get your pain if, if it's well done. Okay, so but this video is not those doing the RSSI exam, I mean doing the OSCE. It's also good for those doing adaptation because some of these stations too, they will equally be meeting it at the clinical setting like the admission station, uh, you know, assessing patients for risks of malnutrition, fall, and water low. So some of these things you have to uh, know it so that it won't be totally strange to you when you start your adaptation okay so i hope this video um helps you in your preparation as you prepare to come over to republic of ireland to practice your profession so if you know you like this video and you've learned a lot or you've learned one or two things in this video please subscribe to my youtube channel click the like button and also share the video to those who need it okay we want you all to come over here it will be so nice to have people more nurses around so i want you guys to uh, click on the subscribe button share the video as well as like so that you encourage me to do more okay i hope to see you all here in republic of ireland in no distant time see you all in my next video please help me to promote my channel by clicking subscribe button and also sharing the video uh, in next video, I'll be addressing some of these stations and also be answering some of the commonly asked questions as far as RCSI exam is concerned and also coming to Ireland, Republic of Ireland to practice as is concerned. Okay, so thank you so much for watching the video. See you in my next video. Okay, thank you.